Next up is uh, House Bill 829, which is Representative Demas's bill. And Senator West may be joining him, yes. He is, yes, thank you. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And we have a little bit of time to, if you need to explain this, so the floor, if you can introduce yourselves and the floor is yours. Jason Nemus, State Representative for the House District 33, which is Jefferson, Odom, and Shelby Counties. And, uh, uh, pardon, we do have a committee sub. Uh, motion on We have a motion second. from Senator Nemus, a second from Senator Wheeler on the committee sub. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The sub is adopted. Senator West. Steve West, District 27. Very good. Wanted to get that in before y'all started talking, so I know it's hard to stop you. <laughs> All right, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I start, I want to take a, just a quick uh, moment of personal privilege to say this is the last time I'll be appearing in a committee before uh, Leader Thayer. It's been a great uh, opportunity to learn from and work with Leader Thayer. Very much support, uh, uh, appreciate his support on the medical marijuana bill in the end. As he understood, it was a, a nice bill that would help people. This bill, if you like that one, you'll like this one even more, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Leader. We'll we, we, shall, we shall see. I'm, try, I'm trying to hunt a vote right now as I sit here, Mr. Chairman. All right, so what does this bill do? What it does is it says that um, in the House version, we had a, a we put a pharmacist uh, situation in where the patient would have to go see a pharmacist. What the Senate version does, it puts the pharmacist on the board of pharmacy that's confirmed by the Senate. It does not require, as the Senate's version uh, that you passed last year didn't, uh, the the, uh, the pharmacist to be met with on a, on a uh, annual basis, number one. Number two, uh, a commitment that I made last year when we passed the bill was that we were going to come back and put a provision in it that allows schools to opt out and so schools can opt out if they don't want to be um, involved in this. If they do want to be involved in it, then it requires them to put a process in place to see who would administer the, uh, the medication, if it's going to be a school nurse or if it's going to, be, if it's going to require the parent. So the schools will have to have, to have a process in place um, to, uh, to administer the medication if the school does not opt out of the program altogether. I want to note, uh, third, that there are no condition expansions in this bill. Uh, this is an amendment from... Um, the version that had been filed in the Senate and that the, that the governor also had wanted. And the thought there is uh, if, there are ne if there needs to be condition expansions over time, that'll be good, but it needs to come with the science. And right now, before the program even starts, um, we don't want to expand the conditions at this moment. Maybe not ever, uh, but if, it, uh, if it's, if it's, if it's uh, necessary in the future, then we'll do it in the future, but not before we get up and running. The fourth thing, which uh, Senator West is going to talk more about when I, when I conclude, is uh, we preserve the local uh, uh, opt-out for the uh, local governments, and so he'll speak more about that. Uh, the fifth thing is we, we doubled down and we made very clear that there's no use in the public. There's obviously no smoking in this bill at all, um, but if, you, if you're going to use it in other ways, you, you can't be using it in public transportation or on the sidewalk and that kind of thing. So, no, no, you know, you can, you can just no administration of the uh, medication um, in public if there's vaping or something of that nature. Uh, the sixth thing, and this is something that I didn't understand was really in the bill. I should have understood it more. And that is that, that we had a provi provisional registration. So if somebody says, look, I want to apply to get a card, while that, they were waiting to get their card, they were eligible to get, to get product. And we looked at that and we thought well, that was an oversight. That shouldn't be because the person actually hasn't been approved yet. So we're saying now there's no provisional registrant that can get the uh, access to the product. They have to be uh, fully approved before they're able to do that. Next is we prioritize uh, uh, Kentucky hemp businesses that are licensed with the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. They've already shown that they're properly capitalized and that they follow the rules appropriately. And so we're giving them a front of the line status when it comes to uh, giving licenses here. Uh, next is we spell out um, the uh, rights and the uh, responsibilities of the Office of Medical Cannabis to enter and inspect properties, kind of like uh, if you guys know how we do it in the ABC world, if you get a license, a liquor license, you are saying to ABC, you can come in at any time, you don't need a subpoena, so the ABC can come in and make sure that all the rules are being followed. Similarly here, if you get a license, whether you're a grower or a dispenser, a dispensary, the Office of Medical Cannabis can come in at any time unannounced, and make sure that all the rules are being followed. So we wanted to make sure that was spelled out. We thought it was implicit in the bill, and I think it was, but we wanted to make sure that we spelled that out. Uh, that's, that's also a request by the governor that, that the senator and I agree with. And uh, last thing I wanted to mention was um, the licenses. Right now the, the, the program is starting on January 1st, 2025, um, but that didn't enable us to get ready, grow the, grow the material, the raw, the raw uh, plants and so forth. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're allowing by January 1st, 2024, licenses to be granted. Very important to note, 
dispensaries can get a license to get up and run and get prepared. They may not open at all until obviously the program begins January 1st, uh, 2025. So we think this is this is a way to administer the program that, that, that the Senate and the House passed last year uh, and to improve it in various ways, tighten it up, tidy it up. And uh, we uh, hopefully uh, we can earn enough votes to get through this committee and the Senate. And with the leader, leader's uh, vote, I think we can. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chime in just a little bit, Mr. Chairman. But first, I'd like to um, thank the bill drafter, Chris Joffreon, here today. Um, if you have any in the weed questions, we can bring him up to answer those. But this is a 139-page sub. He's been working on this for five years, so uh, we have an expert behind us. If you have any in the weeds questions, the the big thing that this this does, the sub does, is carry out SB 47 that we passed last year. Uh, this is the bill that's used to implement. SB 47. Uh, and it, as uh, Representative Nemus stated, one of the big things that it does is it preserves the right of, of local governments to opt out. Uh, we allow licensing earlier in July, uh, but the, all those licenses are subject to uh, local ordinances or elections. So if that if, if a, a government has an election or ordinance and, and someone has been licensed, um, then they've made a bad business decision. They, and everyone should know if you get licensed and you get set up before this time, you're taking a bit of a risk. But it does allow these businesses, to, the growers especially, to, to get up and running, start growing product. So there's actually something there to sell uh, January 1st. And so that, that's a key provision. We also added a pharmacist to the Board of Advisors. There was a lot of pharmacy talk in the House. And so most of that's been stripped out. But we did keep in a provision that, that allows a pharmacist to be on the Board of Advisors. And just another important point, we've met with, as far as I know, all interested groups throughout the session, uh, met with KLC, met with KCO, um, met with uh, CAM, other interested parties. And as far as I can tell, we've addressed um, all of their concerns through the session. So if there are no further questions, we would urge for favorable expression, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So here we are, the last bill in the last committee meeting in my last session, and it's a pot bill. Medical. <laughs> Always use the adjective, medical. Whatever. <laughs> I could have done without having to vote on another marijuana bill uh, before I leave, but your persistence is paying off. I did everything I could to try to kill this bill, and then I kept it alive for the last two days. Um, I was hoping I wouldn't have to deal with this again because it doesn't have an implementation date until next year, but heck nab it, here we are. Uh, I read through the bill, and I appreciate the fact that you did not add any further afflictions uh, that could be <clears throat> remedied by the use of medical marijuana. Uh, I appreciate that. I think that would have gone against the legislative intent yes. of, of the deal we cut last year that convinced recalcitrant members like me to vote for the bill. Uh, could you tell me a little more about the local government opt-out and what that entails? The, it's, it's fairly simple. You have, the locals can decide whatever they want to do on this. So either by ordinance or election, that they can call for an election in, in November and say, as a community, we don't want this in our community, and they have the right to do that. And so either ordinance or election, they're, they're allowed to stop this in, in its tracks if they want to. Now, after this year, they can still do that. However, if you have an entity that's been licensed in that jurisdiction, they're pretty much grandfathered in. So, so you can't, as a business owner, I go to get a license, I'm licensed, it's legal. Um, counties and cities have a year to get this done. If they don't get it done, they can still, still do that in the future, but you can't pull the rug out from under those businesses who invested possibly millions of dollars into that business. That's, follow, follow up, Mr. Chairman. And that's section 13 of the bill. I, no, I saw it. I just wanted you to uh, illuminate it, it for me a little bit. So it's almost like a a local wet dry vote 
Yes. Well, and I'm glad you, I think that's a really good step. And that was in uh, the original SB 47, by the way. Th okay. This is all just to continue. The school opt-out is new language. That is it new. Is. Yeah, it's new. I made a commitment to get votes in the House that we'd come back and do that. And so that we're, we're honoring our commitments. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, again, this this issue is does not thrill me, uh, but uh, out of respect for the two men in front of me who, uh, when they get an, to an issue, uh, they don't let go and uh, they 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 wrestle it to the ground. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that uh, Senate bill, House Bill House Bill 829 be reported favorably. Motion same shall pass. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Nemus, do you have any idea how long the approval process will take? I do not. The executive branch is putting the regulations together now. They have several that are already on the books that are online for the public to see. They're getting more. I don't know how long it would take, but I don't think it would take any longer than the normal license process for a, a, a surgery center or, a, or anything else would, would take. I'm but that's one reason that we've in, we've up the we've um, moved the, moved it up till Jan, till July first, two thousand twenty four, where they can start to give licenses. Although you can't open to the public yet. Follow up, Mr. Chairman. I'm not talking about the licenses. I'm talking about the individual who's has to go through the application and process time. I'm wondering how long that will take. So what I've what I've been told is 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 obviously I think the applications will come in. This will be largely a regulatory question. But the applications will come in, and if it's something of an end of life in a very serious emergency matter, that will be on an expedited process. But the regular ones, I'm told, will be take between 30 days and 45 days. But I think there will be an expedited process for something, at the terminal, end of life kind of thing. If I could follow up, Mr. Chairman, to answer uh, Senator's question, uh, this bill sets up the Office of Medical Cannabis, and a lot of these questions you're asking will be addressed in regulations. And some of those regulations are forthcoming. Some of them aren't, aren't there yet, but but they uh, you'll have to pay attention to those regulations as they move forward, and that should answer a lot of those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, guys, I want to focus specifically on the section about um, Kentucky-based uh, businesses that are already hemp businesses receiving preference. Um, and it, because, uh, unfortunately, the term that was used was, was they've proven their financial abilities or whatever. Um, but this requires them to be in good standing with the Department of Agriculture. What comes to my mind is Jen Canna. And I remember prior to their bankruptcy filing that I may have ended in a debtor in possession. They burned a lot of contractors and farmers in West Kentucky. Um, I believe they were taken over by maybe even an international corporation, which technically maintains a Winchester-based headquarters. But they could be in bad standing with the Kentucky Secretary of State and possibly even have liens against properties that they own for unpaid contractors and yet be put to the front of the line in this process. Um, I, I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong, but that's how I see this. Well, I, th I think so, so. Obviously, there there are going to be licensees that are in good standing that shouldn't stay there. Um, but I, but the thought process here was: if you're a um, a, um, a licensee, a hemp licensee in Kentucky, you've already proven. Maybe you've done things that would, should have that removed, but you've proven that you follow the rules and that you're properly capitalized and so forth. And also, there was a lot of, in my mind anyway. Let me just speak for myself. There was a little bit of. You know, these, a lot of these Kentucky farmers who got into this were hoodwinked and mistreated and bad things happened. And to the extent they want to get involved in this, we want them to benefit. Obviously, it has to be Kentucky businesses, but we want them to be benefit first. And so that was, in my, speaking just for myself, um, now, bad actors, um, yeah, hopefully the Department of Agriculture will remove the license. And, and, and again, this is that they get considered first. It's not automatic that they get the license. Is that they get put front the front of the line? And by the way, that's on page thirty two of the, of the sub. If I could follow up, uh, Mr. Chairman, as Representative Nemus stated, people came to us seeking this in here to help Kentucky farmers, basically, 
and with with the implosion of the hemp business and all that that occurred uh, the, the the ultimate goal was let's and let's not favor out of state businesses let's try to help these guys let's let's try to help our kentucky farmers and make sure a lot of this pr uh, product is grown in the state to your point i can't say that you're wrong but it will be kind of up to the um, commissioner of agriculture to define you know what is a good standing so so they need to tighten that definition i think and make sure that they're policing who who is in good standing technically and who is not and i'm not dis in disagreement with your sentiment of what you're trying to do with that right i think it's actually a i think the sentiment is very very good i think the practical application could put a major international corporation or an international corporation major might be wrong who's burned a lot of Kentucky-based businesses previously at the front of the line for the applications. And, and that's why my concern there, right? I'm, I'm, I'm in complete alignment with your sentiment. I think it's wonderful, but that, that's where my concern comes from in that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And that's our final question. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and I have just two briefly. One, I just wanted to say on the local control piece, I know Fayette County is working on their regulations right now, and they can be as specific as they want to be in terms of as narrow, defined, as long as they get it done before June, July 1st or January 1st? Jan January 1st. January 1st. Mm -hmm. So the licensee could, could get a license to basically say, if we want to operate, they can, but only if they fit the regulations that have been codified essentially by that time. Correct. So they could, they could change their, their ordinance over time. What, what we're saying is, if there's a licensee that's been approved in Fayette County, for example, if Fayette County then decides to get out of the, pro of the program and no longer uh, allow it in, in Fayette County, then the licensees that are already in Fayette County would be grandfathered in. But they can change the administrative rules if they wish. I mean, obviously, fees would go up over time just because they go up over time. Sure. You know, 30 years from now, the fee probably won't be the same as, it, as it's originally established. But so the January 1st date is, is, is important because that's – um, the, that's the safe harbor, if you will, for the city. So a licensee could get a license on July of two, in July of 2024. And because we've said if you get a license, you're, you're grandfathered in, we've also added a provision in here and said, except for those six months, we're allowing the, sit, the local governments to opt out. And then even though normally you have your grandfathered in, you don't for those six months. So does that make sense? It does. I guess I was thinking if a, if a company has a license for, yes, I can do this, but the, the locality decides where in which they can be, that might put them in a precarious situation if the regulations end up being a non a specific location. Does and that the make sense? And local governments have the right for zoning. Yes, yeah. they can do that. Okay. An important point to make here is there's a big difference between getting your license and setting up shop. Okay, that's so, so. So just because you you get your license in July, as bureaucracy works, I mean it's going to take several months to to uh, check check into the property, locate it, work with the city. So you got two or three months there where you're you're not even begin you you won't begin to start construction on anything. So okay, thank you for it's that. It's not as far off as you might think. And the local zoning portion is on page thirty four. Motion on the bill. One more thing. We, already have, we already have a motion and a second. I just have one other question. Uh, this is kind of a citizen-oriented question as the sponsors of the bill. Uh, you know, so you're telling us that there will not be any smoking, there will not be any smell of marijuana. Got it. Oh, got it. There will not be any smell of marijuana coming out of people's cars. And if citizens, if that leads to this, how does how does a citizen – uh, report that how do they react to that yeah i want to be really clear if you're smoking you'll lose your license your card and you will go to jail you should go to jail until the law changes and i won't wouldn't support a change in the law on that it's illegal you cannot smoke in this this is not a wink wink nod nod move to recreational right. this is to help people who need to be helped if you're smoking you won't only lose your card you should go to jail it is still a felony in Kentucky to do that. Very good. I just wanted wanted that on the record for everybody to know that. So, any other questions for the gentleman before us? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Senator Chambers Armstrong. Senator Elkins. Aye. Senator Harper Angel. Senator Mays Bledsoe. May I explain my vote? Yes, you may. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to mention two things. I really appreciate you coming back to the table with schools and allowing schools to opt out. 
allowing parents to do that and not requiring a nurse to do it on their behalf if they have a conscious. So I appreciate all of that intentionality and promise of coming back and doing that. And two, I appreciate the vaping clause because I think that was the other concern that I heard about from a lot of people were, were those two or three things. So I want to say I and I appreciate your support. Senator McDaniel. Cast my vote and explain. Yes, you may. Guys, I'm going to vote no. I pre Everything that you've done goes further towards tightening this up the way it should be um, until I can feel a little more comfort that we're not advantaging folks who may have previously taken advantage of other Kentucky-based businesses. I, that's just where I'm at. So thank you for what you've done. It, it, by and large, it's good. That's where I'm at. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Nemes. I'd like to explain my eye vote. Yes, you may. This will be the last committee meeting that I will see my biological son and my adopted son uh, <laughs> committee me. And I love their, both of their tenacity, as everyone knows. And for them to come together after fighting and screaming and arguing about issues, <laughs> um, it, it is amazing to me, and I have to uh, have pride in this. So I, you can adopt him as long as he's not in the will. <laughs> well, you may not be either. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. Senator Storm. <laughs> Senator Thayer. I'd like to explain my vote, Mr. Yes, Chairman. You can. Uh, as I did last year on the original bill, I'm going to cast a reluctant yes. You know I don't love this issue, and I'm glad I'm not going to be around here to deal with anything else that comes down the pike. I hope that future General Assemblies will resist the temptation to consider adding smoking uh, on medical cannabis, and especially hope. Uh, that the temptation to pass recreational marijuana uh, is, is avoided here in Kentucky. Just because other states are doing it uh, and getting lots of tax revenue from it, it's a high price to pay. It's a high price to pay. And uh, I hope that when this bill is implemented that it does live up to its intent to help people with these afflictions uh, where other more modern medicines don't seem to be helping them. And so it's for them that I cast this Ivo, and I appreciate the two of you and the great work you've ever done. And to your father, I can't remember us screaming and yelling. I can remember some very direct conversations, <laughs> but I don't know that I've ever raised my voice with you. I've got broad shoulders. It wouldn't matter if you did. <laughs> Thank you. How about I? Thank you, Senator. Senator Wheeler. Aye. Senator Williams. Aye. Senator Mills. I want to explain my I vote. Uh, you know, I did not support the original bill, uh, but I think this is good government. If we're going to have it, if the intent is there, the legislative intent is there, then we need to set up and have good government around it. And I appreciate the work that y'all have done and the communication that you've done with all the gr interest groups, especially the local uh, government groups. Um, so uh, I want to echo what Senator Thayer said. Uh, you know, I plan to be here for at least two more years, and uh, I, you know, I don't want to see this expand. But I do believe that the folks that have ailments that have done a great job of, of uh, getting around and lobbying for this bill deserve uh, to be heard and deserve to see if uh, this works for them. So, I vote aye. Uh, yeah. uh, House Bill 829 passes with favorable expression, eight to one. And there is also a title amendment. Is there, is there a motion on the title amendment? We have a motion and a second on the title amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The title amendment passes as well. Gentlemen, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate it.